Hi, Neville Martin here from Guitarist Magazine. I've got a couple of Atkin guitars to walk you through today. Um, anybody who knows Alistair Atkin and his small team down in Canterbury in Kent in England will know that they've been making very, very fine high-level acoustic guitars for probably about 20 years. Um, they're very highly regarded. He makes kind of classic remakes of pre-war acoustics. That's what, what he's been known as. Uh, but he's over lockdown, he decided they wanted to get into making some electric guitars. So these are the first two that they've done. This is called the 1952, and I also have a 1954 here. Uh, you'll recognise the uh, inspiration instantly, um, and I'll talk you through them. They're, they're kind of, they look very vintage, but there's a few modern um, th things about them. So first of all, body wood is not what you'd expect. You might expect this to be um, ash, and you might expect that to be alder. They're both obichi. Obichi is a very lightweight wood, um, exceptionally strong and, and rigid. And it's a great platform for putting electrics on, onto a guitar. Because um, it seems to it be, it's a bit like, in my view, it's a little bit like basswood. It's, it doesn't bring much of itself to the tone of the guitar. It's a very kind of neutral platform and it works very well. So it's a very lightweight guitar, very, very light indeed. Um, it looks great. Alistair has really got into the aging of his guitars. His acoustics are brilliant uh, now. Um, and likewise these, that they're the very thin skin nitro cellulose finish, um, beautifully um, checkered, really, really, really nicely done uh, all, all over. The necks aren't aged in the same way. They're not cracked, but they're just a little bit tinted, a little bit look like they've been worn in for a, for a few years. And uh, he's really good at making necks. They're, they're lovely dimension. This one's a bit on the chunky side, but in a really nice way. Um, I'll go through the the, uh, uh, the the various bits and pieces about them. The We've got a 22 fret neck and they're, they're tall, narrow frets. So they're not like the vintage ones, which were low and narrow and they're not like the modern ones which are wide and tall these are narrow and tall so they look quite vintage um, it's a 10 inch radius fingerboard which is flatter than um, on the traditional vintage guitars of this type um, and they make the pickups in-house they decided to do that they were going to get boutique ones from from outside but they decided to to make their own and they've what they've done is they've done a very similar vintage output and similar vintage tone they haven't tried to kind of put too much of their own spin on it so they, they, these are supposed to sound like you expect them to sound and they, they do um, all the hardware is by Goto of Japan they decided at the stroke they'd, they'd use their stuff because they've been using it for a long time so this one's got the classic ashtray style bridge but it's got the drop sided bit so you can it's better for for damping on uh, over the bridge pickup um, it's got um, brass sat uh, brass saddles um, ever so slightly compensated for intonation. Um, around the back, we've got an easy access uh, neck joint for the for the upper frets. The classic six string ferrule, so it's a through body stringing. Um, it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect it to be. Um, Alistair's gone through his own headstock shape. Um, very, you know, they came up with this, this style themselves. Whatever you think of it, you might like it, you might not. Headstocks were a very contentious thing in terms of design, um, but, um, it hangs together very, very well. I'll give you a few sounds from it. You, you'll you recognize the sounds immediately. Famous bridge pickup. Pull that in tune a bit. setting both pickups on this is always a kind of quacky kind of nice countryish kind of set <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
so exactly what you expect. Um, very normal power output from from, from the uh, from the pickups. Um, very much like my vintage reissue of this type of guitar. Uh, very similar. In fact, I've tested them both next to my own guitars, and very very similar. The bridge pickup on this kind of guitar always sounds great with some tone rolled off it. So if I could do and roll some tone off it. Get it to about there, it doesn't get mushy, it's just a little bit darker. On a guitar like this, it's great to play with the tone controls. Um, less so in my view on the neck pickup, but on the bridge pickup, you can really, really kind of hone that in to the kind of uh, tone that you want. You can make these sound not exactly humbucking, but you can get a good interpretation in a mix, certainly. I'm going through the Laney amp here, which is a nice neutral vintage kind of sounding amp as well. We haven't bunk on mad on the gain. It's a bit gainy. I'll, I'll try, I'll turn the volume down and give you some of those tones with the volume turned down to about six, I reckon. <laughs> It's a very pleasing sound. You can play jazz on a guitar like this, you can play rock on a guitar like this, and many people over the years have used this kind of guitar to make some amazing sounds. Um, so that's the 52, the 1952. Um, it's a very sorted version of this kind of guitar. They've got it pretty much dead on. One or two slightly modern twists on it, which make it possibly a little bit more playable um, and um, they're not cheap in UK prices it's about 2999 so that's kind of right up there with all the you know well-known uh, brands that um, you, you'd call a boutique or custom shop or something so it's you know they've gone straight in at a, at a proper price but uh, the really great guitars so light so re really you know an older guy like me this round their neck all night is much better than some great big slab of concrete that some of them can feel like okay that's the 52 i'm going to go on to the 54 now and talk you through that Okay, here we have the 54. Um, again, no prizes for guessing the inspiration of this. Uh, also again, the body is Obici. It's not Order or Ash, which you might expect. Um, in the sunburst, in fact, when I first saw it, I, I wondered if it was mahogany, but um, Alistair Atkin assures me it's Obici. Um, a lot of people are starting to use this now because it, 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 the great thing about it is it's more sustainable wood. Uh, than some of the others, even Swamp Ash is getting in, in uh, short supply now. Um, and it's nice to start to use woods that um, are not the old standards. And so the, 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 neck, the necks are maple, but sometimes they might be English sycamore. Um, but again, a member of the maple family, so it's very much, very much um, traditional style. There's quite a nice bit of flaming on that maple neck there, and you can see this 
slightly lighter here than the, it's a bit darker than the heel and the headstock. Three pickups, um, as you'd expect. Again, they're kind of vintage output, vintage tone. They haven't been voiced to be anything other than what you'd expect. Um, there is no tone control on the bridge pickup, which there sometimes is now, and I'm sure that could be done if, if, if you wanted to order one that way. It's no problem at all. The pots are CTS pots, high quality pots, um, and high quality capacitors and, and everything is inside here. Nice vintage wiring. The bridge is a Goto classic vintage one. Um, we've got three um, springs here done in that kind of V formation. Even there, they're, they're aged. You can see their age there. There's no back plate and there's no screw holes for a back plate. So if you want one, you'll have to do that yourself. A lot of people don't have the, the back plate on now. I think Eric Johnson was one of the first people who started doing that. And I don't have them on mine either as, as well. It's just easier to get should you break a string. Again, we have the easy access uh, neck joint. Again, we have 22 frets on a 10 inch radius fingerboard. Um, bone nut, both, both have bone nuts and 22 tall, tall fine frets. Um, these are lovely, beautiful Goto vintage style tuners, again, slightly aged. Not, not haven't gone mad with the aging on this. The, the pit guard is white and that is, that's a bit, gone a bit stained there. It, it's rather nice actually. Um, and, and they do really have a great vintage vibe about them, these guitars, even though they're clearly not vintage guitars. Um, I'll give you some sounds on this. Um, very nice, very nice toned guitar, this. Bridge pickup, got a good raunch to it. It's not too bright. Um, sometimes without the tone control, they can be bright. This isn't. That's second position. That's um, Humphrey, as you notice because so, I'm quite close and we have lights. It's Humphrey in positions two and four. Middle position. If I turn the volume down a bit, it gets very, very sweet sounding. That, that bridge pickup actually, it's really... Vibrato arm is very, very smooth. It's set with the bridge plate slightly off the body, so you've got downward and upper. So, like you've got, you can get. It stays in tune too. It, again, it's a very convincing guitar, light in weight. Um, yeah, I forgot to say actually, the tuners are locking on, on this, or they're not on the 52 because of that because of the arm, it makes it the tuning a bit better. Um, there's really not much to say uh, uh, other than it does what it says on the tin perfectly. Um, and I like it very much. Again, price on this is the same as the 52, but UK price, 2999. So not cheap, but it's set itself right in that, if you like that kind of boutique-y uh, ballpark. Um, and a lot of people are liking the fact that um, 
guitars are being made with slightly different timbers. Uh, people are accepting them from other than the, the massive brands. Um, we like those as well very much. Um, but um, apparently the dealers are uh, kind of pulling Alistair's hands off to get these guitars. Um, it, there's going to be a whole range of them. They're doing some offsets as well. They've got a humbucking guitar in the pipe pipeline. Again, it'll be a bolt-on neck one, not um, not a, gl a glued neck type. Um, and the, the, the offset ones are going to be their own body style, apparently. Um, and I kind of watch this space and see what's going to happen, because I think there's a lot more happening in the Atkin camp. Um, as I say, made in Canterbury, Kent in England, great historical town. Um, and they've made some nice historical looking guitars. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time.